person is coming to kill you, you have the ability to kill him first. First of all, you have a lot of stories in the, out there in the world. I'll tell you in the Navi. There was one Navi. Ah, what? Who was David Amelech's uh, general? His name was Yoav. Now, when Shaul Amelech died, his, his, his general, Shaul Amelech's general was... Who knows? Shulam Mela's general, Avner. Avner. Now, Avner wanted Shaul Mela's son to take over, Ish Boshit, not David. He wanted it. He made, I, don't know, I don't know if he didn't want David, but he says, at least let him also be. So, therefore, there was two kings at, at the same time, Ish Boshit and David Amelech. In the beginning, in the beginning reigns of the, of, of the transition between Shaul Mela's death till, till David Amelech actually became the sole king, but till then. What happens? One time, Yoav meets up. They, that, that happens to be. Yoav met up. They were together at a well. And they see Avner there. So it was David Amel's general. And Avner, which was, which was Ishboshet's general, which was Amel's general. And Avner, hell, let's make a duel. They wanted to like, make a fight. Who is the, who is the real king? Is it, gonna, is it really from David? Or is it from Shaul? Or is it Shaul Ishboshet? Who is the real king? And they went, 12, 12 guys, they picked 12 guys from David and Mela's side, right? Yoav picked 12 guys. And 12, uh, Shaul and Mela's, uh, um, Ishboshet picked 12, right? Ishboshet was Avner. Avner is, uh, which is a general, he picked 12. And they had a duel. They had a fight. Happens to be, that fight wasn't so, uh, such a good turnout. Because, it was 12 versus 12, and all 12, and all 12, they all died. It was 24 of tragedy in Klal Yisrael. In any case, it was a big chaos at the end. Or at, after they got killed, all the soldiers started running after each other, wanted to kill each other, whatever. They, got. they started running. They started, everybody started running. It was a chaos. And one of the people was the general of Nair. He started running away. Everybody started running away. Nobody wanted to make, make a fight. And Yoav's brother came along, Ta'el, and he was running after Avner. And he was very fast. So Avner looked at him. He said, listen, I don't want to fight. It was a misunderstanding. I don't want to fight. But listen, leave me alone. I don't want to fight. He kept, but he kept on running. Kept, as, the, as he's running, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Yoav's brother, Atel, is running after me. Avner keeps on running. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. He said, if you're, gonna, you, you're coming with me at a sword. If you're going to come to kill me, I'm going to have to kill you back. And he says, no, I'm not. you're going to kill me. I'm going to have to kill you back. If a person's on the way to kill what did he do? He didn't. He wasn't listening. The, the Avner took out the back of his sword and <laughs> sliced him in the back. The back sword went through the entire rib cage of Yahweh's brother. And he was uh, He was allowed. Uh, like it says, There's a little bit insight in Navi. You know, we have to know a little bit of Navi. You know, I'm saying what happened. And at the end of the day, there was a big, there was a big <laughs> civil war at the moment. They, they were running after now. They're running after Avner. Now Yahweh found out that his brother got killed. So Yoav was one of the generals of David running after Avner, which was the general of uh, Ishbosh of Shaul. So he's running, running, running. Finally, they get to a hill, and as they get to a hill, they, they, Avner says, "This got out of hand. Let's make a ceasefire." Enough. Yoav blew the shofar, the ceasefire, everything stopped. But what do you see? Hashem go. If a person's coming on the way to kill you, you're allowed to kill him. You're allowed to kill him first before he kills you. Now, what does the Mefashim say? This is one of the things that it's talking about. Is about the Yetzirah. That's what it says. Upeshua mefarshim shirot sam lomad. What is it talking about? La Yetzirah. Haba lehorgecha. He's coming to kill you. Hashkim lago. Kill him first. You understand? He's coming to kill you. Kill him first. Says, of course, one of the things that we got to kill him first is what? He says, he writes, When a person's waking up in the morning, that's his first battle with the Yetzirah. Of course, of course the night before, sleep a good night's sleep. But the first battle of the day, is the waking up in the morning. Why? You always have a fight. Aye. 
get up, not get up. And not only that, how are you going to get up? How are you going to get up? Of course, you need some time. Modeh, I need the fanecha. You say, Modeh, I need the fanecha. You don't want to go up. I remember one time I told you, one time in Yeshiva, we went and learned this halacha, and Shukhan Ruh, the first halacha says, what? You get ber kari, la avodot to person has to wake up like a lion to serve Hashem. So I remember my, 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 dormit, my dormitory, there was a guy next door, next thing. And you hear him every morning waking up, oh! I was like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? So Shuhanu says, you got to wake up like a lion. So every morning he wakes up, he gets out of bed, oh! Oh, it also says, you forgot about this one? He wakes up straight like this, oh! It's like, because why? It says that if a person wakes up just put on like, boom! It's not good for the heart. So that's why Hashem made such a chesed. A person should what? First say, Modeh ani lefanecha melechai v'kayam. Even before you get out of your bed, wake up. Modeh ani lefanecha melechai v'kayam. Shechazar tabin ishbati b'chamla rabba emunatecha. And then you get up. Wow. You had that few seconds of, of your body not getting into shock of waking up right away. So that's why he says, wait. Modeh ani lefanecha. Finish that. Now, when you're getting up, this is how you're going to get up. I'm excited. Ah, Hashem. I'm excited. I can serve you. And what's the first thing when you wake up? You do what? Nitilat yadayim. What do you do nitilat yadayim for? Rashbah, Baba Hashim explained that what? Because you're like a Kohen, like you're Kohen. One of the reasons, never reasons. One of the reasons is like you're a Kohen, like before you walked in the Beit HaMikdash, you would wash his hands to serve Hashem. So too, you're a Kohen, give you a call, you're serving Hashem today. So you would wash your hands in the Beit HaMikdash, one, one, one. Besides the Ruch besides all these things. But that's one of the reasons. Wow! How exciting are you when you wake up in the morning, Yishtabah HaBoreh, I'm so excited. I can't believe what's going on. You're flying. I can serve a shame. Ah. That's really the way you're supposed to wake up. You have another day to serve a shame. Oh, you know what I'm going to do today? And you have your schedule written out. In the morning, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go pray. I'm going to go learn. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. And this is really the first battle because a lot of times a person, uh, he's drowsy. He presses the snooze button. And then he presses it another three times. And then another four times. Finally takes the long leg chucks it. Ah, not bad. He throws it at himself. He press stop. There's always a constant battle with the Yitzhara when a person's waking up. But eventually you'll be able to uh, beat him. Because it's hergel, meaning to say, what? Well, in the beginning it's hard, hard, hard. Then it becomes used to, used to, used to, used to, used to. You understand? But what does he say? He says the first battle of the Yitzhara you got to come up before you can make, make him is what? Is what, Mike? Mike. Sally, waking up in the morning. Waking up because he's always going to put this through. He's always going to tell you that. It's the first battle.